my sort of baseline assumption is that Bitcoin will likely do what the S&P normally does. Hello, everyone. Today, our special Benjamin Cowan discusses the interest rate and Bitcoin correlation and come up with some key points to consider going forward before the Bitcoin halving in April 2024. Join our vibrant community of like-minded enthusiasts as we decode market dynamics, discuss cutting-edge trends, and share valuable tips to navigate the exciting realms of crypto, Bitcoin, and stocks. Subscribe now! hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. The first thing I want to do is I want to overlay interest rates to this chart. Now, you're probably thinking, you probably already know what I'm going to say. You think you know what I'm going to say, but I will say like there, there, there are examples of, of Bitcoin rallying as rates go up, right? We've seen it multiple times. Or when when the Fed pauses. Okay, so in 2016, 2017, you can see that that the market was rallying and the Fed was raising rates. Now, this is what normally happens. Okay, normally, if you think about it, <coughs> bull markets are the market adjusting to higher and higher interest rates, right? Now, that might seem somewhat counterintuitive, but let's look at the S&P, right? Let's look at the S&P. You can see that when the market, when, when rates are going up, the market also tends to be going up. And why is that? It's because normally the Fed is, rate, they're, they're, they're making monetary policy tighter as the market continues to go higher, just so we don't run out of, you know, run out of control and, and inflation comes in, right? You know what? You want to keep a good balance between an, an, an expanding economy and, but not wanting to make the market too loose, right? Not wanting to make conditions too loose so that you basically just have a runaway market. So with Bitcoin, I mean, you can clearly see that, I mean, it, it sort of looks like that over here, right? With the S&P going higher, as rates were going higher, so too, the yes, Bitcoin is going higher over here as rates were going higher. Now, what you'll notice last cycle is that at this bottom here, it actually corresponded to the Fed pausing rates, right? It, it corresponded to a pause. And the top that came in 2019 occurred before the first rate cut, right? So the first rate cut was in July. You can see it right here. So this cut, you can see that Bitcoin topped out before the first rate cut. Now, this is something that might not be intuitive, if, you know, when you first sort of hear about it, right? Because normally we would think like, okay, well, if you get a rate cut, that means you're going back to looser monetary policy and therefore risk, asset, risk assets should start to do well. But again, if you go look at the S&P 500, where we have a lot more data for, right, once you start to get rate cuts, that's usually, right, I mean, usually that's where the market tends to start behaving pretty poorly, okay? You can see rate cuts here started basically when the market topped. Over here in, in, in um, 2000, the market had already topped before rate cuts began. <coughs> so... When rate cuts start, it doesn't tend to translate to an immediately bullish market because oftentimes the reason the Fed is cutting rates is because they're, they're trying to compensate for perhaps keeping rates tight for too long. And, and now the market is screaming for help. Normally, the first few rate cuts that the Fed does is not enough to turn, you know, to turn the economy around. And, and again, it, the market will tend to bottom out close to the last rate cut once the Fed figures out just how much they need to cut rates in order to get the economy back on track. But a lot of times the market will just continue to fall until you get close to, you know, to whatever that last rate cut is going to be. So you can clearly see it how and how it has played out in the past for, for the S&P 500. So what you'll see again is that 
the S&P in the financial crisis, right, it topped out right around the first rate cut. And in the dot-com crash, it topped out before the first rate cut. Now, with Bitcoin, we unfortunately don't have a ton of history. You know, it'd be nice to have more history, but we just simply do not have it. Throughout this entire bull market, these bull markets and bear markets over here, you know, interest rates were essentially at, at zero, right? I mean, there wasn't you know, there wasn't all these rate hiking cycles that, that Bitcoin really had to had to contend with. But we can look at at least one cutting cycle, right? One cutting cycle. And remember, with the S&P, when the Fed starts cutting, the market tends to not do that well. Now, there are some exceptions. Uh, if you look at 2019, you can see the Fed started to cut in June of 2019, and the market still did okay for a little while, but we still ended up getting hard landing, right? We still ended up getting the, the drop into the pandemic. So whether you want to include that one or not is up to you. But generally speaking, you know, once the Fed starts to cut rates, the market tends to see some sort of, of a sell-off, okay? And we've seen that, we've seen that many times. And I mean, you could go back and look at, at, at the 70s, right, and see here that when when the market when the fed started to cut the, the s p still continued to drop for a while now over here it was a little bit different than than pre you know than recent business cycles because that was also a period of of high inflation okay so going back to bitcoin we've previously talked about how last cycle bitcoin bottomed out once the terminal rate was reached and then topped out before the first rate cut, right? So the first rate cut was here in July, right? So let's just draw that line across. Sorry, the first rate cut was right here in July. Bitcoin topped out just before the first rate cut. And where did Bitcoin bottom? On the last rate cut, right? So kind of similar to what the S&P does. It bottomed out on the last rate cut. Now, why does the Fed cut rates, right? Why, why, will, why would they cut rates? Again, it's because they've, you know, they've, they've done enough, too much damage to the economy and the market can just simply no longer bear it. If you go back and look at the financial crisis, I mean, it, it's not like the market was screaming for help when they started cutting rates. I mean, the Fed started to cut. The market was essentially at, at, at all-time highs. But if you overlay the unemployment rate, you'll start to see why you can see that the unemployment rate had bottomed you know, around May at around 4.3% uh, or so, 4.3, 4.4%, something like that, 4.4%, and it was starting to move up. So by the time the Fed started to cut, it had moved up to 4.7%. So it's not like the Fed was looking at the market and said, oh, crap, the market, oh, it's at an all-time high, let's cut. No, it was the economy, right? Maximum employment that they were worried about because it's a dual mandate, right? You need price stability, but you also want to see maximum employment. And here, clearly, they had raised rates too high for too long, and the unemployment rate started to go up. And therefore, to compensate for the unemployment rate starting to go higher, the Fed had to start cutting rates. But once the Fed started cutting the market dropped. The market dropped because the unemployment rate was going higher. If people are getting laid off, I mean, the last thing they're probably thinking about is what, you know, what, what stock are they going to go buy, right? That's not going to necessarily be on the forefront of their mind if, if they're worried about getting laid off, okay? So that's why we, we track the labor market. Over here, right, in the dot-com crash, why did the Fed start to cut? Was it because the market had come down a little bit? No, I mean, like, you know, the market had, had risen a ton over the last several years. <laughs> it was because the unemployment rate was starting to trend higher. So the Fed started to cut. <coughs> and that was where a large portion of the selling eventually happened. So then, you know, you, you can look at, at Bitcoin today and, and try to make sense of what's going on. We've put out various thoughts about, about sort of what's going on. But you'll see that once we hit the terminal rate, Bitcoin was already well off this low over here. So when the terminal rate was reached over here in 2018, again, that was where Bitcoin bottomed. And then Bitcoin topped before the first rate cut. 
But the reason why this cycle looks so much different from this one is because normally the Fed raises rates in, in a bull market, right? When, when the market is trending higher. But in this case, they did not do that, right? They, they should have. They should have raised rates. I mean, hindsight's easy to say, right? But they should have raised rates in, in 2021, but they didn't. And so rather than raising through this entire bull market over here, they only started to raise in early 2022, in March, is when the, in March of 2022, that's when the first rate hike occurred. But that was already once the bear market had started. You know, and, and, and you know, the S&P then dropped basically off and on for the next nine months. Bitcoin dropped until until November of, of 2022. And so this entire rate hiking cycle started after the bull market from 2020 and 2021 was over. So in this case, we sort of talked about this idea that Bitcoin bottomed out not at the terminal rate, but at around the point where the Fed shifted from 75 basis point rate hikes to 50 basis point rate hikes and, 20, and then 25, right? So I, I've previously argued that that is what could have theoretically marked the bottom for Bitcoin uh, back, in, back in November. That low that we had is that shift from 75 basis points to, to 50 basis points. And then ever since then, I mean, you know, Bitcoin has slowly trended higher in the face of raising rates of higher, higher and higher rates. Right. So, I mean, it, you know, at that point, rates were at around four percent. Now they're at five and a half percent. And of course, Bitcoin, as we know, has trended higher where it becomes difficult to navigate. Really difficult is last cycle. We know that Bitcoin stalled out before rate cuts began. Now, this cycle is unlike the last one in the sense that, again, this low here did not occur at the terminal rate. The terminal rate occurred, you know, way over here back in, in July, and Bitcoin was, of course, well off of, of this low. And again, a, a large part of that, I think, is just due to how late the Fed has been in this, in this hiking cycle. So then will it play out in a similar manner for rate cuts as it did last time? I don't know. But what I do know is when you look at, at the S&P 500, you know, there's all sorts of ways that it has, has, has played out in the past. But the most common way is that there is a sell off sometime during rate cuts, assuming the unemployment rate is starting to go higher. You might wonder, well, why in 2019? Why in 2019? What did the market continue to go higher? even though we got rate cuts because the unemployment rate wasn't going higher, right? The unemployment rate was still trending down. So we got these rate cuts, but the unemployment rate wasn't really showing any, any weakness at the time. And so the market trended higher. These other two business cycles, the market sold off, but it was because again, the unemployment rate was going higher. So then that brings you to today, right? What's going on? Is the unemployment rate trending down? No, right? I mean, it's potentially formed a base down here, and it looks like it's starting to potentially trend higher here. Now, again, the unemployment rate moves very slowly. I mean, you know, there, there's a chance that it could just slowly go up, right? I mean, maybe in December it prints around the same level that it printed, you know, this, this, this month, and, and then sometime in 2024 it starts to pick up the pace. But it moves very slowly. And, and we have to remember that, right? I mean, we only get one data point each month. And, you know, if it comes in at 3.9% again, that's not, a, that's not going to necessarily be a huge move in the labor market um, over that month. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to go 4% or even 5% sometime in 2024. So my sort of baseline assumption is that Bitcoin will likely do what the S&P normally does under rate cuts assuming that the unemployment rate is going higher, which is what it's starting to do. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Benjamin Cowan. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.